Now, we all know by now that WWE and the powers that be are feverishly working to retool, overhaul, remake, relaunch, rebrand NXT. They can launch that new logo color scheme into the fucking dumpster as far as I'm concerned. But nonetheless, I've talked about that previously about how it really started missing the plot and risk recent years under Triple H's leadership. He tried to run a glorified indie fed. And of course, since WWE is not in the wrestling business, it ultimately ended up falling short. It's just a reality. And in the meantime, it wasn't doing what its main job should have been, which was to produce main t roster types of talent in main roster type of roles that you can plug and play and go away. We're doing that. So it doesn't surprise me as part of this change in mindset, this change in approach when it comes to NXT. And we saw the reports come out a couple of days ago about WWE and their philosophy when it comes to scouting and signing independent wrestlers at this point. Now, admittedly, when you hear it from Dave Meltzer now and it comes to WWE, you've got to take that with a grain of salt. You got to look at a bunch of other sources to see if they're reporting the same thing. As you have to know by now that Dave is so much in the tank for Tony and his boys, the EVPs of AEW, that you should not trust everything Meltzer says. You have to know that by now. You have to recognize the bias. Even if you agree with everything he says, doesn't mean that you should be actively seeking it out. So I take it with a grain of salt, but at the same point in time, I actually kind of do believe this one. He said on his website, and I quote, Several in the company have told us that the word from the top is no more independent talent as far as scouting and such, and that AEW can have all the independent talent to itself, unquote. And then to follow that up, WWE president Nick Khan actually seemed to kind of align with that statement by saying, and I quote, we don't want to just keep doing that same thing. We have want to look elsewhere for great young talent, unquote. My oh my. If this isn't the most sensible yet most stupid thing, then I don't know what the hell is. I got I got to admit. Like it makes sense in a lot of ways. WWE should not continue to be in the business of trying to find a bunch of 5'8 to 5'10, 180 to 205 pound dudes. That's not their game. It's never been their game. And as long as Vince McMahon is still in his old Vince McMahon, I'm Al Davis of WWE mode, it's never going to be their game. So why in the bluest of blue fucks would you go out there and actively scout, recruit, and seek to sign talent that doesn't align with Vince's vision of sports entertainment. Why are you bringing in a bunch of wrestlers to do wrestling shit when he wants sports entertainers? It makes no fucking sense. It also makes sense to get out of this business because why are you going out there and signing these guys and gals in their mid or even late 30s, and in some cases you had people signed in, your 40, in their 40s down in your damn developmental territory. That's not what a developmental territory is supposed to be for. You should be finding people that are newer and fresher to the business. You should be finding people that you can mold and cultivate and craft in your image of what you want instead of just automatically trying to unteach them 10 or 12 years or whatever the hell of everything else that's garbage that they learned other places in the independent scene. Like, that makes sense. And the reality is the WWE has had a huge indie infestation problem in recent years. And some of you are going to think that I'm just strictly referencing size here and going to throw out the lame line about vanilla midgets are going to talk about how much I love the muscled up, roided up dudes. And that's not the case at all. Like actually listen to what I'm saying. They had an indie infestation where it became about too much of the spots and the moves and the matches, which has never been WWE's core competency or key strength any damn ways. 
They've always been about characters and stories and spectacle and pomp and circumstance and theater. And you're bringing in a bunch of guys that want to be crash test dummies. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to work. They have a hell of a time trying to learn the WWE style. They don't know how to tell stories. They don't understand or grasp some of those basic concepts of trying to paint the WWE style movie that Vince likes. Well, goddamn, pal. We're in the movie making business. The smug ass look. So, it doesn't make any fucking sense to keep bringing these people in. Like, it's just, it's stupid. It's not aligning to what the reality is of the main roster. And the problem is you're bringing in so many independent guys over the years, it doesn't matter if they're 5'10", 190 pounds, or 6'5", 300 pounds. They're all working the same stupid-ass style. Nobody's unique. Nobody's different. Nobody knows how to do any of these things that actually can make real stars. Nobody cares to apparently learn how to do that shit. Because all they've ever come up learning to do was how to bump around and crash test dummy their way into getting a reaction. Because they were too lazy or too shitty as a talent to fucking figure out how to get it done in the right, meaningful way that actually emotionally connects with the audience and helps them stand out and be unique. I wish you'd be criticizing WWE for not wanting to be in a business that they really don't like. They've spent 40 years calling themselves sports entertainment and not professional wrestling. So why are they continuing to bring in these professional wrestling types? It makes no fucking sense. It's stupid. And to those that are going to sit there and say, well, no, you're going to just sit there and go back to an FCW type. Well, before that, if you remember, you had OVW as a developmental. And at one point in time, you're talking about they were bringing in people because of their looks and this and that. Yeah, that also produced um, Batista and Lesnar and Cena and Orton and Haas and Benjamin. That's just to name a few from that OVW time. Or some of the big marquee names. NXT wishes it had produced talents to the level of a Lesnar, a Batista, a Cena, a Orton, a Haas, a Benjamin. Tell me where I'm wrong. So if you got back to that philosophy a little bit, is that really such a bad thing? Like it wasn't like Roman Reigns had 10 plus years on the damn independent scene. Like, that's how this shit should be working. That doesn't mean, you know, like you had Bianca Belair doing it for a little while before she was brought in, but not very much. You know, Sasha Banks, when she was brought in Mercedes, like, she hadn't been in the business incredibly long either. But this is what you should be doing. You're going out and finding people in their early, mid, even maybe late 20s that you bring in, put some time into them in developmental, teach them how to be WWE stars in the WWE way, and then you've got them potentially for five, eight, ten years plus on the main damn roster. That's how the name of the game is supposed to work here. Now you had that at one point in time when you had like Rollins and Ambrose and Reigns. These are all cats in their like late 20s. Bray Wyatt, same thing. Big E, same thing. All mid to late 20s when they were brought up to the main roster. And now you're a few years later and Roman and Rollins remain and Ambrose and Wyatt are gone. Well, it should happen sometimes. But that should be the approach. No more 35-year-olds with 10, 15 years of indie experience that clearly don't give a shit to learn your way. That is sensible. That said, this is also really stupid. Because, and I know I call out, I've seen some of the articles that have been written about this in the past couple days, Talk about, well, there could be exceptions, and this is subject to change because it is dealing with Vince, and it always is. But why would you intentionally shut yourself off from any possible talent pipeline where you're saying, even though I don't believe you for a second because you're full of shit because your actions over the past decade plus clearly indicate that you're full of shit on this, but you want to get back into the business of making stars? No, the fuck you don't. Absolutely nothing about your actions consistently indicates that you actually want to make stars again. You just don't. Bianca just lost her title at SummerSlam. Instead of teaching her to do something that a credible babyface would do, that a babyface that the fans would like and relate 
to and get behind would do, which is go out there and threaten to beat the brakes off of Becky Lynch, if not just beat the brakes off of Becky Lynch. You have her coming out, and she's whipping her hair, and she's dancing, and all this other stuff. And there are all these other connotations and undertones for that. But at the end of the day, you intentionally do these dopey, cheesy-ass baby faces that don't fucking get over, so don't tell me you want to make stars when you consistently do things that indicate you don't want to make stars. You got to continue to ride the efforts and resources of energy you've invested in the past by bringing him back in a Cena, bringing him back an Edge, bringing him in a Brock Lesnar, bringing him back. Like the reason you have to do that is because you're so shitty at your job now. So why would you cut yourself off from a sizable, significant part of a talent pool? Like, no. Don't be going and signing every damn 35 year old that's five foot eight, 180 pounds, and only flips and kicks around. I agree with that. But so many wrestlers start on the independent scene. You gotta start fucking somewhere. You're not gonna be able to just only bring in Olympians and freaking actors and freaking football players and basketball players. You'll be able to get away with that sometimes, but you can't be all of that. You've got to have a mix. You got to have a variety. And if you can bring in some interesting, you know, potential filled talent from these spaces, why wouldn't you want to specifically laser focus in and target talents on the independent scene that fit your mold? Not everybody on the independent scene is my size or looks like me. Do a better job, do a better job of due diligence and researching and finding those talents that fits your needs. And as far as AEW goes and letting them go down there, I gotta get you can't sign them all anyways. Let them have whatever they want, but that's the type of shit that comes back to bite you in the ass too. Because to that point that I just made, you're cutting yourself out from this entire talent reservoir entirely. And for every 100 jabronis, that's basically the exact same. All of a sudden there's this six foot five 260 pound dude with personality, charisma, has natural abilities on the microphones, knows how to connect, and you gotta teach him some of the other finer points. Now you just basically handed AEW a guy that could be a mainstream type of star that brings in new eyeballs that you desperately badly needed. Both on their own, but also as a guy to work with some of your top guys like Roman, like Lashley, like Drew. That makes absolutely no fucking sense to me whatsoever. Stop signing a shit ton of guys under six feet. Yes, I agree with that. Not because of their size necessarily, more so because of the fact you got too many of the damn same when you were talking about NXT. Like you had to mix this shit up. Variety and spice is key. If everybody looks the same, nobody stands out. This is the reality. So I get that. No more signing guys that are very long in the tooth that don't bring a significant fan base along with them. Again, Aligned, understand, and agree with that assessment. Wanting to get back to focusing on talents maybe with more size that you could try and make stars in your own image. Like, it's not just about size, but that is something that you still understand better. So it is better to go and work with your strengths as opposed to sitting there and emphasizing your goddamn weaknesses, which is why the whole thing of what Triple H did with NXT was so goddamn stupid. Stupid, stupid, freaking stupid. But to sit there and completely cut yourself out. Like you're going from one extreme to another dumb dick extreme. All these reasons you're talking about, I'm talking about here are sensible. But then to cut yourself off entirely is just stupid. Because not only could you potentially be benefiting somebody that is a form of competition for you, even worse is you're undercutting yourself. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face type of dumb shit. This doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. So it's a perfect example to me of senseless or sensible stupidity. That's what this is. It's sensible in a lot of ways and also really stupid.